Hi, I'm Robert Aikens. I am a principal scientist at the Alfred I. DuPont Hospital for Children, which is part of the Nemours Children's Health System in Wilmington, Delaware. And I'm the senior author on a paper entitled Transcriptional Analysis of Muscle Tissue and Isolated Satellite Cells in Spastic Cerebral Palsy. Hi, and I'm Benjamin Schrader. I am an activist and writer with cerebral palsy. And so basically, I just wanted to start off by asking, um, Rob, what was the, uh, the, your overall goal with this paper? So my group, myself in particular, are really interested in what makes kids and people with cerebral palsy tick, mm -hmm. how their muscle functions, how you know, different aspects of their lives are impacted by muscle function. So the reason we did this specific paper was to get a better handle on some of the, the fine detailed molecular mechanisms associated with function of muscle yeah. in people with cerebral palsy. Yeah, it's interesting that you talk about the, the fine details because I think often when, um, especially parents, but also young kids are presented with ACP diagnosis, the finer details are kind of the furthest thing from their mind. We're given these very broad uh, pictures and sort of this um, very generalized uh, point of view. So I, I'm thinking if if we can study um, more with more specificity. That, that could be helpful going forward. Is that, am I right in assuming that? I, I couldn't agree more. I think we need to understand better. There are quite a few uh, kids that are born with CP and families that are dealing with a diagnosis. And, you know, as someone that works in the research field, mm -hmm. we really don't know enough about what's going on or what the trajectory might be for an individual or what specifically is happening, you know, except like you said, at that broad level, Mm -hmm. uh, and that's part of what we're trying to delve into, but it's a it's it, it's very complicated. People are very complicated, and yeah, you know, that's no different for anybody with CP. Yeah, right, exactly. And I think I think that trajectory that we often think about in terms of in terms of when we have children and we have goals for our children, the trajectory is very linear and very um, typical or able-bodied focused. And that's not, that's not the reality for any of us, right? We're very different. So I, I think if we have more specificity with research like this, can we maybe have more like different types of trajectories? Can we reframe how how to go about that? I, I hope so. And I think that's true. I think we have the ability in the scientific community to do much more detailed analyses. And really the question is, can we understand all of this information and what's mm -hmm. going on? And there's, there's a whole bunch of steps you'd have to take. But the, one of the big visions is that when a baby's born, what's the risk of CP? What does that mean? What should the family do? What are the what are the you know the therapies? And can we identify new therapies? But for us to go down that road and really think about personalized medicine mm -hmm. for for you know, patients with CP or kids with CP, we need to know a lot more. And and really because the you know the, the way we think about CP in the community is well something happened and movement control is not right. Right. But that's basically it. When you delve in deeper, which we did in the paper, um, there are fundamental differences that show up in the, the muscle, right? And we looked at tissue mm -hmm. and then we isolated the cells that are really responsible for you know, fixing the tissue and regenerating the tissue. Mm -hmm. And we found differences in both. So mm -hmm. the muscle tissue is a little bit different and the cells that come out of the muscle tissue is a little bit different. You know, my, my mom likes to tell this story of when I was younger, I used the I used a walker, and I because we thought that was the the way to go because that was the trajectory we were presented with, and I would walk in every room, 
super tired because just standing there took a ton of energy. And it wasn't until I was five that I got a uh, power wheelchair and it completely redefined my way of life because I learned I could be be talkative and energetic and move at the same time. And I just think if we had access to what you guys are doing and the or is now with this research, if we had had access to that when I was little, I think in addition to, you know, saving my preschool self lots of energy and exhaustion, I think we would have, we could have um, had a, we would have been able to target um, my care more to my specific needs mm -hmm. rather than what a generalized trajectories that I needed. Yeah. And there's many, so this is just one of the first mm. steps. And there's there's a few other groups, not enough. A mm. few other groups working on trying to better understand mm -hmm. muscle control. Why are some people weak and other people not are weak mm -hmm. or or like you said, the energy metabolism mm -hmm. or the why stiffness develops the way it does. Uh, and you know, all those things are known to happen in CP, but at a real basic level, we don't know why or what the what the ramifications are at the mm -hmm. tissue and cell and sort of molecular mm -hmm. level and understanding that. So even things like, can the muscle fix itself? And are there things that we should be doing? Yeah. Um, we need to understand the, those, those building blocks and we're just getting started to understand that but I, I think that future that you're talking about is something that we can get to yeah because i just think i think specificity is so key because like my brother and i we both have cerebral palsy right but but my brother walks with crutches you know he the example that i use all the time is he can use he can travel around via right Airing like Uber, that's a form of liberation for him, but it's an obstacle for me. Mm -hmm. So I'm, obviously that's a hyper-specific example, but I think hopefully this is the beginning of a more specific, uh, specialized care, and that's really exciting to me. Like you said, it's very early on, but but we see, see the potential and I th it gets really exciting. The thing, so let's talk about that for a minute. The, for us to go with that idea, to reach that goal, mm -hmm. it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of sort of dissecting what exactly is going on here. And two of the things we looked at in this paper are muscle tissue. So these are kids coming in for surgery. So we looked at the muscle tissue and what pathways are, are active from this analysis. Mm -hmm. But then muscles, complicated there's muscle you know the parts of the muscle that help contraction but my muscle is fat growing in it and there's blood vessels and there's all this other stuff that makes you know this muscle particularly stiff in me and in other people so it's a complicated thing so so we measured this stuff but it really only tells us well in this complicated piece of muscle mm -hmm. what's going on and we, we found differences and maybe that's not too surprising given biomechanics and mm -hmm. what's going on with cp but then we also went in and we took the cells out so the, the muscle has a context and it's, you know, you're using it for movement. The cells, we took them out of that context. Mm -hmm. And really what we're trying to get at is whether or not there's something intrinsically different in the way muscle cells that we got from biopsies and CP are different. And we, we found some fundamental differences mm -hmm. and we're leading to try to, un well, we're trying to understand what do those, what do those mean? we need to know when they kick in and whether or not those differences suggest therapies yeah. and why, you know, there, there's, there are a lot of questions in my mind as a scientist, to how did that happen? And why is that the case? Yeah. And what does that mean for movement and, and the child that got diagnosed? So I guess what I'm, my next question would be then, what for you as a scientist, what do you think the next step is in this yeah. research? So the, the 
I think the biggest thing that has to happen is more people have to be looking at these problems. Mm -hmm. So things like this podcast and what DMCN is doing with these podcasts and getting people mm -hmm. to look and think about these problems. Um, th there's many steps that need to happen in parallel. Mm -hmm. The one we're going after is well, what's the genesis of these differences, mm -hmm. right? Because there are many reasons why muscle or these cells we isolated might act differently. Mm -hmm. um, we think that there's this epigenetic, right? And there was a commentary on this paper that talks about this as something that we need to look at, that there's some patterning or there's some differences associated with the cells coming out of muscle mm -hmm. tissue that was in a stiff muscle mm -hmm. and a, a child that had a contracture, and I think you know what a contracture mm -hmm. is, or that they had some, some issue. And we're trying to figure, well, how does that carry through? Mm -hmm. And if we can fix that, so if the cells can do more of what would happen, say, in regenerative or reduce the stiffness or mm -hmm. allow for better, better muscle growth, mm -hmm. that would be great. So our next step is to go after well, what's the genesis for the differences mm -hmm. we found in the paper. And I think I think if we find out that genesis, it's, it's exciting where it could lead, right? But could lead to all kinds of things in the future. That's the beauty of science. It's possibility, right? Yeah, I think you're absolutely right about that. Yeah, it's so very exciting. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I'm so glad we got to do this today. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited to see where this goes. Well, thank you, Benjamin. I really appreciate it and talking to you. I always appreciate talking to you. Uh, and thanks everybody who's listening to the podcast. Appreciate it.